Good evening and welcome back to Comprehend. In this video we're going to be discussing a fundamental aspect of being an adult or being a business person and that is traveling. Traveling, whether it be for business or for pleasure, is one of the most physically and mentally taxing tasks that adults perform. So the question then rises, how can we as adults make traveling easier on ourselves and even enjoyable? For our travel veterans out there, we know that this is possible. So I went and gathered some information from some travelers, I did some research online, and I pulled from my own personal experiences from traveling, and created a list of 10 ways to make traveling easier. A disclaimer with this list is that it's designed for long distance travel, but a lot of the items on this list can be used for short distance travel too. I'd also like to say that there were a lot of things that did not make the cut with this list. These are just the 10 that I thought would resonate the best for those who are traveling a lot. With that in mind, we're gonna jump right into number one, which is what I refer to as picking a lane. Picking a lane refers to staying with a specific hotels group, flying with a certain airline, or using a specific payment method so that things are as consistent as they can possibly be. This is a good idea because hotels groups, airlines, lines and credit card companies usually have some sort of reward system that you can benefit from if you use them all the time. One of the reasons why traveling is so taxing is because there's a lot of little details and contingencies along the way that just nickel and dime your stress level as you go. But having these three aspects nailed down nice and smooth will allow for a more relaxing experience because you know exactly what to expect. This idea of smooth transitions goes very well with number two, which is doing research on where you're traveling to. Before you even get in that car, step on that bus, or get on that plane, just take a moment, sit down in front of a computer, and do some research on where you will be staying. A few good things to look up is what kind of climate they typically have, what kind of hotels groups they have in the area, what kind of restaurants are available, and if there are any tourist attractions you can see while you're there. This is helpful because it helps you understand what kind of clothes you should be packing, where you plan on eating that night, how far the hotel is from the airport, and things like that. This tip is especially necessary when traveling in large groups because it is so difficult to find a hotel that everyone can afford or find a restaurant that everyone likes. And speaking of affording things, number three is over budget. It's helpful to budget because then you have a really grounded idea of how much money you will need to travel, and over budgeting is a very proactive and helpful idea because if you go overboard somewhere financially, you're okay. What I suggest is when you get a bottom line figure on how much it's going to cost to travel somewhere, add 15 to 20% to that figure. That way if you see a souvenir that you like or gas costs more than you thought it was going to or the tax in a certain region was higher than you thought it would be, everything is totally fine because you have extra money. And even if everything goes strictly to budget, that means that you will have extra money while you're traveling and that's never a bad thing. Number four is get a credit card. This is one that a lot of people might disagree with, but let me explain. A lot of airlines and hotels don't accept cash payments up front anymore because it's not traceable to the guest and therefore is a flight risk to the company. Some of these companies are kind enough to allow you to pay cash when you're done, but they do need to have a credit card down that can cover your stay or flight in order to ensure that the company is going to get paid. At the minimum, have a credit card for emergencies. Just in case you're on a family vacation 800 miles from home and you get a flat tire. Just put it on the credit card and worry about it later because at this point, you might as well keep going. Additionally, credit is typically usable in other countries, so if you're traveling internationally, it's to your benefit to have a credit card because even though you're gonna pay interest on a credit card, you're going to have to pay money for a currency exchange anyway. That being said, credit cards can be a total financial rabbit hole, so I'm only recommending that you use credit cards when you have to and you only use them if you are financially stable enough to afford the payments afterward. Keep your necessities close to you. This is an especially helpful tip if you're flying. Keep your necessities with you on a carry-on, especially if you use them frequently. 
But this is also a helpful tip because sometimes checked baggage gets lost, and if it does happen, you will have your necessities with you so that there's no problem. But this tip works for all forms of travel because it's very likely that you use your bare necessities frequently, so having them close to your person is usually advantageous. Number six is keep your travel information. When you book a hotel room, the agent will ask if you want a confirmation number. Yes, you do. Have them email that to you. That way, when you show up at the hotel, if you say, I'm checking in for John Smith, and they say, there is no John Smith here, you can say, yes, there is. Here's my confirmation number. At that point, they'll either say you're booked at another hotel, or the agent simply spelled your name wrong. When they ask if you want a receipt, yes, you do. It's proof that you paid. Just have a folder where you keep all your flight information and your lodging information and all these major receipts. And then when you're done, you can get rid of them if you want to. It just keeps a paper trail while you're traveling so that you know you're safe. Number seven is mark your luggage as clear as you possibly can. This tip is more specific to people who are flying, but it goes for people who are traveling by sea or by train. Your checked luggage will be handled by multiple people while you travel. So mark it as clearly as you possibly can so that these people can do their job correctly. Number eight is pack for the location or event. We discussed this a little bit in number two, but this one's specifically associated with packing luggage. While you're packing your luggage, take a moment and consider where you're going and why you're going. Also consider how long you're going to be traveling so that you can be sure you're packing the right type and proper amount of clothing. Just don't be the guy who comes down to the hotel front desk and asks to ask where the nearest open convenience store is because you forgot to pack a belt. That's the kind of thing that throws your budget off. Number nine is a simple one, but have something to do. Something about traveling that flusters most people is that it's so time consuming. So bring something to pass the time. A couple suggestions could be audiobooks, music, someone to talk to, a movie, a puzzle book, something that just occupies your mind. Because if you find something that you enjoy, then a 10 hour drive is going to feel like a six hour drive. Anything that does that is worth your money. And number 10, arguably the most important of all, make time to sufficiently rest. This is something people overlook all the time and is a huge source of stress while they travel. Traveling is mentally taxing as it is, but we also have to consider crossing over into different time zones and other things like jet lag. Just take some time and make sure you're getting the rest you need as you go. If you have to take a nap, then take a nap. If you have to go to bed earlier than you want to, then just do it. Make sure that you are well rested because traveling is hard. This tip is especially important for people who are traveling for leisure because if you're traveling for fun but you're not resting well, then you're not going to have fun. So just take some time and rest so that the next day you will have a good time as intended. But that's all I have for you today. This has been 10 tips to make traveling easier for you. I hope this helps some of my road warriors out there. If you like my video, please do hit the like button. And if you like my channel, please feel free to subscribe to it. I put out new videos every Wednesday. And if there's anything you would like to see from me, or if there are any critiques you have, please do post them in the comments section below. I do read it and it allows me to create better content for you. So until next time, it has been a pleasure, and I will see you next week.